always from the heart of the city and now on demand 24-7 on the CHFI website. This is the soundtrack to accompany a little nostalgia. And I'm Don Jackson around the world on the Internet. Former U.S. Vice President Herbert J. Humphrey once said this about the good old days. They were never that good. Believe me, the good new days are today, and better days are coming tomorrow. Our greatest songs are still unsung. Henry Mitchell in Memories magazine wrote, Nostalgia is the sweet halfway house by which you love the past and the sweet things in it without actually committing yourself to the nonsense that life was better than. This hour, before fast food, with lovers and author strangers, from iTunes and CHFI.com. Kim Carnes with Betty Davis Eyes, Cheryl Crow with Sting Always on Your Side, and the Beatles yesterday. I'm Don Jackson with Lovers and Other Strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. If someone handed you the keys to a time machine, would you take a trip back? Not to right any wrong or to follow a different life path, just a chance to live once again in the past. Given the opportunity, would you give up today's frenetic pace for yesterday's more relaxed lifestyle? I'd like to thank Susan for passing this along to me via email. It really made me think as I read it. Its author is unknown, and I quote, Someone asked the other day, What was your favorite fast food when you were growing up? We didn't have fast food when I was growing up, I informed him. All the food was slow. Come on, seriously, where did you eat? It was a place called At Home, I explained. Mom cooked every day, and when Dad got home from work, we sat down together at the dining room table, and if I didn't like what she put on my plate, I was allowed to sit there until I did like it. By this time, the kid was laughing so hard I was afraid he was going to suffer serious internal damage, so I didn't tell him the part about how I had to have permission to leave the table. But here are some other things I would have told him about my childhood if I figured his system could have handled it. Some parents never owned their own house, wore Levi's, set foot on a golf course, traveled out of the country, or had a credit card. My parents never drove me to school. I had a bicycle that weighed probably 50 pounds and only had one speed. Slow. We didn't have a television in our house until I was 19. It was, of course, black and white. And the station went off the air at midnight after playing the national anthem and a poem about God. It came back on the air about 6 a.m. and there was usually a locally produced news and farm show featuring local people. I never had a telephone in my room. The only phone was on a party line. You had to listen to make sure some people you didn't know weren't already using the line. Pizzas were not delivered to our home, but milk was. All newspapers were delivered by boys, and all boys delivered newspapers. My brother delivered a newspaper six days a week. He had to get up at 6 a.m. every morning. Movie stars kissed with their mouths shut. At least they did in the movies. 
There were no movie ratings because all movies were responsibly produced for everyone to enjoy, without profanity or violence, or most anything offensive. If you grew up in a generation before there was fast food, you may want to share some of these memories with your children or grandchildren. Just don't blame me if they bust a gut laughing. Unquote. Lovers and other strangers remembering the good old days. From iTunes and CHFI.com. Gladys Knight, try to remember, and the way we were, and Chicago with old days. I'm Don Jackson with lovers and author strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. This was also included in that piece sent to me by Susan, and again I quote, My dad was cleaning out my grandmother's house. She died in December. And he brought me an old Royal Crown Cola bottle. In the bottle top was a stopper with a bunch of holes in it. I knew immediately what it was, but my daughter had no idea. She thought they had tried to make it into a salt shaker or something. I knew it as the bottle that sat on the end of the ironing board to sprinkle clothes with because we didn't have steam irons. Man. I am old. How many do you remember? Headlights, dimmer switches on the floor, ignition switches on the dashboard, pant leg clips for bicycles without chain guards, soldering irons you heat on a gas burner, using hand signals for cars without turn signals, Coffee shops with tableside jukeboxes. Home delivery of milk in glass bottles. Party lines on the telephone. Newsreels before the movie. TV test patterns that came on at night after the last show and were there until TV shows started again in the morning. There were only three channels, if you were fortunate. Howdy Doody. 45 RPM records, hi-fis, metal ice trays with lever, a blue flashbulb, Studebakers, wash tub ringers. Unquote. Now, if you are too young to remember these things, remind your older relatives or friends about them and watch the look that comes over their faces. They might actually be pleased by how far we've come along. Lovers and other strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com Natalie Cole with Matt King Cole, Unforgettable. Mark Cohn with The Things We Handed Down. And Louis Armstrong, What a Wonderful World. I'm Don Jackson with Lovers and Author Strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. This is called The World in Black and White. You could hardly see for all the snow. Spread the rabbit ears as far as they'd go. Pull up a chair to the TV set. Good night, David. Good night, chat. Depending on the channel you tuned, you got Rob and Laura, or Ward and June. It felt so good, felt so right. Life looked better in black and white. I Love Lucy, The Real McCoys, Dennis the Menace, The Cleaver Boys, Rawhide, Gunsmoke, Wagon Train, Superman, Lois Lane, Father Knows Best, Patty Duke, Rin Tin Tin, and Lassie too. Donna Reed on Thursday night. Life looked better in black and white. I want to go back to black and white. 
everything always turned out right. Simple people, simple sights. Good guys always won the fights. Now nothing is the way it seems, in living color or on the screen. I want to go back to black and white. In God we trusted, in bed they slept. A promise made was a promise kept. They never cussed or broke their vows. They'd never make the network now. But if I could, I'd rather be in a TV town in 63. It felt so good, felt so right. Life looked better in black and white. I'd trade all the channels on the satellite if I could just turn back the clock tonight to when everybody knew wrong from right. Life was better in black and white. The poem's author, Unknown, found on a grandmother's website on the internet. Lovers and other strangers from iTunes and chfi.com. Blue Rodeo, Bulletproof, and Five for Fighting with Superman. And I'm Don Jackson with Lovers and Other Strangers from iTunes and chfi.com. Do you remember a time before PCs? My children don't. There are many reasons to embrace this technology. Of course, there are other times we just want to heave it out the door. A poem called Life Before the Computer reminds us that there was once a time when memory was something you lost with age. Now, in this computer-driven world, it means something entirely different. An application was for employment. A program was a TV show. A cursor used profanity. A keyboard was a piano. Compress was something you did to garbage, not something you did to a file. And if you unzipped anything in public, you'd be in jail for a while. Log on was adding wood to a fire. Hard drive was a long trip on the road. A mouse pad was where a mouse lived. And a backup happened to your commode. Cut, you did with a pocket knife. Paste, you did with glue. A web was a spider's home. And a virus was the flu. I guess I'll stick to my pad and paper and the memory in my head. I hear nobody's been killed in a computer crash. But when it happens, they wish they were dead. Lovers and other strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. Daniel Powder at the end of a bad day. I'm Don Jackson with Lovers and Other Strangers from iTunes and CHFI.com. Christopher Andre from the Christian Science Monitor wrote, For whatever reason, I find that my attitude to memory is changing. I have been too rigorously down on it. Memories have seemed soft and unprogressive. But I suspect now that by throwing them out as so much bathwater, I have at the same time thrown out a baby or two. To see freshly is not necessarily to totally abolish yesterday. Nobody rightly chooses to live in the past. But how cruelly should we abandon it? Unquote. This poem was sent to me by Francis in Quebec some years back. It's by Beverly J. Anderson called The Simple Joys. They miss so much who do not know the simple joys of long ago. When life was lived with easy pace, and thankful hearts said table grace. 
When folks took time to be a friend, a helping hand, so quick to lend. When houses had a front porch swing, oh, how we loved that creaky thing. On summer evenings, friends would call, and they were welcome, one and all. And Mum would serve homemade ice cream as laughter from the porch would stream. And vendors came to sell their wares, the fun filled trips to county fairs, the concerts at the old bandstand when music was so very grand. They miss so much who never knew old fashioned joys such as I do. The village church so gleaming white, its steeple bells that rang each night. The solace that we all found there as we met for a time of prayer. Our values were quite different then. Oh, time. Can I go back again? We were not rich in days of yore, but we had blessings by the score. Our wealth was found in many things from which the soul's contentment springs. Our homes were filled with so much love, deep faith was ours in God above. How much they miss who do not know the lovely joys found long ago. I wish that they could share with me my pleasant trip in memory back to the good old fashioned days when life was lived in simple ways. The words of Beverly J. Anderson. It's really not that yesterday was better per se, as it was a simpler age. When we didn't feel so rushed, when we weren't so connected all the time, when we had a little more time for ourselves and our families. The pendulum has swung far to the, to the other side. We need to get it back to the middle again. A mixture, a blend, if you will, of the old and the new. We just need to slow down, enjoy the moment. The future will come at its own pace. Lovers and other strangers from iTunes and chfi.com. David Cook with the time of my life. One final thought on nostalgia from Art Buckwald in a speech and quoted in the January 2000 issue of the Reader's Digest. He said, We seem to be going through a period of nostalgia, and everyone seems to think yesterday was better than today. I don't think it was, and I would advise you not to wait ten years before admitting today was great. If you're hung up on nostalgia, pretend today is yesterday, and just go out and have a time. I hope you will tell all your friends about lovers and other strangers from iTunes and chfi.com. Good night, sweet dreams. I'm Don Jackson. <laughs>